So who am I? For those of you who are not familiar um, with me and my role, I, as Ali said, am sort of split between two spots. I mean, right now, of course, I'm in a basement, but <laughs> usually in the before times. I am a researcher affiliated both with the Sheridan Center for Elder Research, which is in Oakville, Ontario, and the Schlegel UW Research Institute for Aging, which is up in Waterloo. And I am a researcher and also a clinical neuropsychologist. And so what that means is I'm the type of psychologist that specializes in understanding disorders of the brain. And my focus in most of my work is around arts and how the arts can impact health specifically for an older population. So most of the work that I do, that I was doing, that I hope to do again, is, is work with older adults and also those who care for them, their care partners. So be it family members and friends or formal care partners who are working with them potentially clinically. Um, so there's also a number of opportunities that we're looking at that are intergenerational in nature. So that's why I say it's not necessarily just the older adults, but also sometimes younger children. So for example, some of the work that we were doing with the RIA, I think that I may be disconnected. Let's have a go. Uh oh. Not sure if you can hear me. Says I'm not connected to audio. Kate, I'm just looking at some of the comments here and it says that folks can still hear you. And I can still hear you fine as well. Hello. I am back. I'm not sure um, what happened there. I'm very, very sorry about that. I've just connected to a hotspot off my phone. So hopefully that will be um, that will be better in terms of connection. Oh, the joys of <laughs> webinars. Um, so we also have been looking at intergenerational opportunities. So opportunities where we can have younger adults participating as well. And um, of course, right now we're not looking at that in person, but also opportunities for virtual intergenerational engagement. So that's a little bit of background in terms of who I am. What is Arts and Aging Day Canada? And what is it that we're looking to do with this particular day? Well, we will be hosting this day on September 24th. And it's really a day that's devoted to celebrating arts engagement for older adults in Canada. So. We would like this as much as possible to be a nationwide campaign to provide an opportunity to people across the country to participate in whatever capacity they are able to participate. The day is inspired by a similar day that was started for the first time last year in the UK. And it aims to highlight the work that's being done, as I mentioned, in the arts with an older population across the country. And the reason why I use the term arts engagement is because I think there's a very real need for us to differentiate between sort of people who are doing more passive observational type of arts engagement. So for example, you're watching a movie or you're listening to music or you're drawing a picture with your grandchild, but you're just sort of watching them do it versus more active engagement so where you're actually actively participating so maybe you've taken the crayon and now you're drawing um, you're doing some dancing maybe you're writing some poetry or you're writing down your life story so these types of activities so arts engagement can really be anything we don't want people to feel as though oh i'm not you know i don't want to participate i don't want to sing but can i come down and watch absolutely that's part of the day that's part of the engagement so this, as I mentioned, was inspired by the National Day of Arts and Care Homes, which took place in the UK last year. For this year's campaign, the um, Arts and Care Homes 
Association is focusing on what they're calling creative communities. So again, bringing people together in any form of creativity, creative engagement. All of these pictures that they show here, of course, are more active engagement, but you could think of it as well as people on the other side watching. So watching this person do pottery, watching this person dance, uh, watching this person draw, knit, um, you know, have a conversation with a young child. And their day will be held the same day as ours. And we're hoping to make this sort of, this is the first international opportunity for us to connect with them. And hopefully other countries will catch on in subsequent years. So I actually came across this day on social media last year. I wasn't yet, yes? Sorry, I'm just gonna stop you for a second. Um, it doesn't seem that your slides are advancing for everybody. Um, okay. <laughs> That's all right. What I'm going to just do maybe is I will um, take over and you can just let me know when you'd like the slides to advance. Okay. Sorry, guys, a little technical difficulties here. We'll get this going right away. Okay, so let's move ahead. So we've talked all a little right. bit about what is Arts and Aging Canada, September 24th. We've talked about, if you move ahead, Ali, to our National Day of Arts in Care Home slide. So this, um, that's probably why you didn't know what I was talking about when I was saying there's someone doing pottery and someone singing. Um, so this is a great website that has been created by our UK partners. Um, now this work that's being done in the UK is funded. So it's funded by the Banting Foundation, which is an independent grant giving foundation dedicated to improving the quality of life. Um, for individuals across the nation. So they have received funding, which is why they have such a fabulous team and a great website and have been so open and enthusiastic about us connecting with them to be part of this day. Um, so as you can see here, their, their theme for the year is creative communities and there's all sorts of different activities that they'll be profiling. They have two main ideas that they're working on this year. One is called Only Connect which is a creative letters and pen pal project, which is really lovely. So you can do it either over, the, uh, over snail mail, I guess you would call it, or they actually have an app that can connect you with older folks in the community. And they also have something which is really fascinating called their arts fund voucher. So if a family member, for example, of someone living in retirement or long-term care is looking for a way to support their loved one, you can actually go to the website and purchase a voucher. So it's almost like a gift certificate. And the gift certificate can be shared with the home and then the home can use that to buy art supplies, which is pretty amazing. So, you know, if it's the holiday time and you're looking, you know, instead of buying someone, uh, you know, a, a box of Timbits to go in the break room, for example, at the retirement home where, you know, my grandpa's living, we could give a voucher going forward so they could buy more art supplies, for example, for their art studio. Okay, please go ahead. And so I came across uh, this organization, NAPA, which is their National Activity Providers Association in the UK. It, I think here it would amount to um, a therapeutic recreationist, that type of a professional. And they had posted about this day last year and I thought, oh, arts, care homes, that sounds right up my alley. Most, you know, a lot of the work that I'm doing is in retirement and long-term care. Care homes is what they call their long-term care homes in the UK. And so I connected with this organization, NAPA. I connected with Arts and Care Homes. And it's really just through a tweet, through social media, that I was able to connect with the organizations and come across them. And then Uh, that's really how we're going to move forward with our day is also through social media. So please go ahead. Yeah. What's going to happen? Uh, it was a national social media initiative in the UK as well. And what you can see is that there was quite a lot of uptake for the day. So there were over 600 total posts, 268 unique users, which suggests to me that some homes were actually posting more than once, which is fabulous. There were over 1 million unique viewers of all of these different posts. So that's a lot of engagement. And the hope that you know we have here, it's a smaller country, of course, Canada versus the UK, but we hope to get sort of similar numbers in terms of the posts that we have and people's understanding of the day. Obviously, again, it's our first time, we're sort of doing this from a very grassroots 
way, we have some beautiful websites that have been created by Ali, who introduced me, and also by our team at the Sheridan Center for Elder Research. But we're definitely doing this um, for the first time to see how it'll go. So we're hoping to be able to mine some of these data on social media and also be able to find out a little bit more about whether we get a lot of engagement, whether we get a lot of posts, who's, you know, who from around the country is looking into this information. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can see how even in their first try last year, there was quite good social media engagement on the day of. Please go ahead. So our idea for Arts and Aging Canada is really to share a day that's a chance to look at the positive effects of the arts, art activities, creative activities, also to learn what other organizations are doing and to create connections in the field. So in Canada, I've only been in my role for a few years, but what I've discovered is there is incredible work being done across the country, but we don't all necessarily know about each other. So I'll speak to someone and they'll say, oh, have you heard about so-and-so who's doing the exact same work as you? And I'll connect with that person and we find incredible similarities in our work. Um, or I'll hear about great activities that are being done in a retirement or a long-term care home and, and want to try and see if there's any sort of evaluation that I can provide um, support for, for example. So there is a lot going on across the country. What we're hoping is that this day will enable us to make stronger connections um, in terms of the day itself. Okay, please go ahead. So why do we focus on the arts? Why are we calling it an Arts and Aging Day Canada? Why not physical activity or nutrition? Well, there, there's a number of reasons. The first is that I am extremely biased, obviously, but I believe in the healing and incredibly powerful opportunities that there are when we engage in the arts be it observation from a more passive way, be it active creation. And we know the research support, and I'm sure many of you listening and on the call today have seen it with your own eyes, or you, you, know, you are yourself very creative. There are multiple benefits to, the, to people's health and well-being when we engage with the arts. We also think that the arts are very accessible to people because as I mentioned earlier, there are opportunities for both active and passive engagement. So physical exercise, it's hard to watch someone go for a run and get benefits from that. <laughs> but you can watch someone dancing, you can watch someone creating pottery, you can watch someone singing or playing an instrument and just be transported um, when that's happening. There's also, we, we feel that the arts have an opportunity for inclusivity. So I ran a survey a few years ago where I asked folks to tell me about their opportunities to engage in the arts across Ontario. And one of my participants said, oh, I don't do anything. I'm too disabled to dance. And I thought to myself, what a powerful statement that individual is sharing with me. I think that even if you move your eyes, even if you move one finger, even if you tap one toe, you are dancing, you are moving, you are enjoying the feel of the music and you are letting it course through your body. So I think that the arts is something that we can really modify different activities to all sorts of different experience levels, different abilities. Um, we can make accommodations for people's physical, cognitive, uh, you know, differences. And we can try and offer different types of activities to people depending on their interests as well. So some folks may not be so keen on dancing, but we can potentially offer them uh, creative writing. Or maybe someone has always, you know, loved playing um, with, working with their hands in the dirt. And we give them some beautiful play to work with. So it, there's, a, there's an aspect around the arts about inclusivity and about you know, offering activities that are specific to individuals, but also tailored to meet their needs. So it's not just a one, one size fits all activity. We can really focus on you know, offering something different for everyone. Okay, you can go ahead. So who can participate in Arts and Aging Day Canada? Well. We hope many of you here on our call today. Um, really, so we we made a very conscious decision when we began this discussion around the day of whether or not we would, as they are doing in the UK, whether or not we would pitch it as something for people in care homes, so in retirement or long-term care homes. Um, and we really decided for our first year to go broader and to make this a way of really helping people connect, especially now at a distance, that help people connect regardless of where they are. 
So, you know, I think when we were originally thinking about the day, we thought, oh, if it's in a retirement home, maybe someone's daughter will come in and help them paint on the day of. And then the home can take a beautiful photo of mom and daughter painting together and then post it. It, you know, looking ahead to the fall, it may not be likely that something like that can happen. So we wanted to be more inclusive. And so say, even if you're living in the community or you're living in Vancouver and your dad's in Moncton, you can still participate with him at a distance. So really anyone who is willing and able or wants to engage in the arts and they themselves are an older adult or they want to engage with an older adult. So it can be anyone from a long-term care home, retirement home, people working in senior centers, um, arts organizations who would like to get involved, absolutely and even individuals themselves who want to participate potentially from home. Go ahead, please. So we believe that by making this so open and inclusive and by sharing this work, we can, we can highlight not only the importance and positive impacts of the arts, because of course, we've seen it firsthand, we've seen it from the literature, we know that people are seeing the beautiful benefits of the arts um, for, for older individuals and for themselves as well. But we're, we're also hoping to learn is how to encourage more people to create these activities. So that's sort of double creativity, how to create a creative activity for people. But really what we're also hoping to get from this day is because we're researchers, um, not only a beautiful exchange across the country of you know, creative opportunities and arts engagement with and, and by older adults, but also to learn from one another. You know, we don't have a national organization right now in Canada that focuses on arts and health or on arts and aging like they do in other parts of the world, like the US and the UK. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to find out a little bit more about what folks are doing and to see how we can support the arts. Please go ahead. And we also, when we began talking about this, really we started thinking about the day and brainstorming about it in October of last year. And then moving forward into this year, moving forward into the spring, we were a little bit hesitant in terms of whether or not we should be moving forward with the day. You know, what with uh, the pandemic and how people, especially in long-term care and retirement, um, many people are being restricted from entering the homes. And many of the artists who previously were coming from the community into the homes may not be able to do that or may not be able to do that as frequently as they were. We weren't really sure if this was putting too much of a burden on people, um, but we, we actually think it's a perfect time to do this, obviously being very cognizant and respectful of people's capacity within these organizations, but we think it's a beautiful time to do this because of what's going on, because of the world around us, because of the fact that we can't necessarily see our friends and families the way that we wanted to. And for older adults, particularly living in the retirement and long-term care sector, this may be a beautiful way of reaching out to their communities, reaching out to family members and friends, and also a way of highlighting the innovation that's happening from the team members, the employees within these organizations. So I posted a picture here. This um, is actually my grandfather's retirement home in Quebec. And this is a big window that faces a major street in Montreal, and there's a lot of traffic. And they made this beautiful sign. So in two languages, ça va bien aller, it's going to be okay. Rainbows are sort of taking over Montreal and Quebec. And just this beautiful message that, you know, we're in here, we can't come out. We can't see everyone the way we want to, but it's going to be okay. So this positive message of hope. And I have seen these time and time again being shared on social media of the different operators across the country. And so I think it's a really good opportunity to highlight what's going on in these homes you know, to focus on the positive. We've heard a lot of pretty sad and negative messaging around long-term care in particular in Canada over the past four months. I think this is a great opportunity for us to try and change that narrative, turn the tide and say, you know, so much positive and beautiful and creative work is happening within the homes. I think it's also a wonderful way to focus on social connection. So, um, if someone, you know, isn't necessarily able to see their grandpa, but maybe they make him pictures and then mail them to him. Or if someone loves to sing with their aunt and they can sing over the iPad together. So it's a way of trying to keep people connected, especially people who are living in communal settings, such as retirement and long-term care. It's a way of people keeping people connected to the outside world, but also people connected to one another. So many homes um, right now, you know, 
people may be restricted to their suites, people may be restricted to their floors, people may only be able to see each other um, from a distance. I went, I attended a Therapeutic Recreation Ontario webinar last week where they were talking about how some residents will sing from their doorways because they're not allowed to come out of their room. So I think this social connection that we can create through the arts is so important. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's very important as well to see whether we can start to build capacity in Canada for a national network. So much of the work that's done in this field is not being shared because it's being done organically on the ground by healthcare professionals, by trained musicians, trained artists, trained art and music and drama therapists, for example. And the, the work is fantastic and the work is impactful, but the work isn't necessarily being shared. So we're, we're constantly seeing that people are reinventing the wheel in place to place to place. I saw a statistic once that approximately 80% of the published literature out there looking at, are the arts good for an older population are actually looking at programs that researchers bring in somewhere, run for a certain number of weeks and then disappear with. So these are not organic, sustainable art-based activities. These are art-based activities that are brought in by a researcher. So only, and, and we know that, you know, arts organizations have incredible opportunities for older adults, um, community centers, uh, parks and rec programs, long-term care, retirement here, uh, home, homes, all of these are providing arts opportunities. So we need to just be able to figure out how can we best harness all of this information and share it amongst one another? So that if you have an idea for a program, I'd love to start a pen pal program in the home I'm working in. You don't have to rack your brain to try and figure it out. You could access this website or you could access other individuals in the network who could help you figure out you know, how to move forward with this type of activity. Okay, please go ahead. So if you're still with us and you're thinking, wow, this is something great. I do want to get involved with this. Here's how. So we urge you to take advantage of the social media that your organization has. I mean, it could be anything, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Not sure if people are using TikTok. I do not have that. I am definitely uh, not cool enough for that. LinkedIn, your own organization's website, whatever it is. But what we'd love you for you to do is to take an image, write a blog post, take a brief video of some sort of arts-based activity that's occurring in your organization. Again, it could be people watching, um, you know, a movie or a dance performance or the Canadian Opera Company, you know, so looking, taking a picture of older individuals in your organization, even watching a screen while a performance is occurring. It could be people dancing, it could be people painting. Whatever it is that sparks you and that is something that is organic within your organization, share it with us. You can do it ahead of time. You can do it of the day of. Make it as simple or as detailed as you want. It's all up to you, whatever is easier for you. My hunch is that most people on most days within retirement and long-term care homes are probably doing some sort of creative or arts-based activity with residents or at least offering that. I know many homes now have studios or spaces where residents can even come into when it's not sort of a scheduled time in the calendar and, um, you know, work on a creative activity. I know a lot of residents are creative on their own. They're doing things up in their own rooms, up in their own suites. Maybe they're singing while they make the bed or, you know, maybe they're lying and reading their favorite book of poetry. People are engaging with the arts all the time. So, you know, if you are working in this type of a setting, you obviously know your residents best. So it's up to you to what you choose to share and how you choose to share it. We are hoping people will be creative in their sharing of creativity. We of course would love for you to please add the hashtag arts and aging CA. So this will allow us on the day of to find what you're posting and to share it with other folks. So share the work on social media follow that tag as well. Look to see what other people are posting and see what type of inspiration that brings to your own organization or even to yourself. Please go ahead. So on the day of, we will be monitoring and sharing content from this hashtag 
we will also be doing so leading up to the day. So if there's something that you're thinking to yourself, oh, we're actually having a local theater troupe come and do a physically distant performance outside. And you know we're really excited because we've never tried anything before, but it's happening in August. Take a picture of that, share it with us, absolutely. We can use content even before September 24th and then share it again on the day to highlight again, the important work that's being done across the country. Because we are you know, researchers at heart, we will be compiling data on the day related to your location. So the location of the posting, what type of a location is it? Is it someone posting from home? Is it someone posting from a rec center, retirement, long-term care home, what have you? We'll be posting what type of activity was happening. Is it music, poetry, um, you know, creative writing, pottery, what, whatever have you, whatever people um, tend to choose and what type of participants were involved. We're really interested to see whether these are all activities that are being, especially in a retirement and long-term care setting, whether these are all activities being run by staff and team members for residents, whether staff and team members are also participating, whether they're highlighting creativity in their own day, you know, be it a staff member who loves to sing and sings on their break, something like that. Um, so we're really interested to see also who, who and where <laughs> uh, is doing the sharing on the day of. Thank you, go ahead. So we'd love to encourage you to use that hashtag, the Arts and Aging CA, to connect with other organizations and for us to have your, to share your posts. Um, some organizations have received sort of a targeted email from us. Uh, some we will be, as the day goes forward, we'll be addressing on social media and encouraging organizations, large operators, for example, to uh, participate. But of course, we have to be mindful of everyone's time right now and everyone's capacity to participate. Um, not all places have social media coordinators or people who are, you know, as tech savvy. So obviously it's whatever you can do. If you take a picture and your organization doesn't have social media and you still want us to share, you can always email it to us. Um, you can send it to the Sheridan Center for Elder Research or the RIA and we can help share it for you. Um, you know, you can give us a call and talk about it if you'd like. There's a lot of different ways to get involved, but primarily, we would love to have content to share, be it coming from your own organization or if you don't have social media with your organization, you know, if it's a way that we can facilitate that. Um, you can tag myself, our Twitter feed that focuses solely on that connection between arts for an older population and our two organizations, Twitters as well. Please go ahead. This is something that I am learning about as well. Ali is much more savvy about this, but you can also use different hashtags. So of course, we're trying to focus on that arts and aging CA because that will enable us to find people. But we also want to encourage use of other hashtags that highlight the importance of the arts. So things like arts and aging, arts for all, arts across the lifespan. You can also integrate whatever form of art discipline you're showcasing. So for example, music and aging, dance and aging, song and aging, whatever you would like. Um, and what we'll also be doing on the day is we'll be promoting all of the social media content with the hashtag of our UK colleagues as well, so that we can connect back to them and try and figure out whether what we're doing here is similar to what they're doing in the UK. If there's anything that we can learn from them, they can learn from us. Thank you, please go ahead. So here are some example tweets. So we have a toolkit for you that is attached in your handouts and um, you can also find on the web, our website. But here are some example tweets. So um, the Kate Dupuis Choir is joining in the fun. Uh, you can share a little bit more about the project. Make sure that you use our hashtag or check out this you know, amazing pot created by residents as part of our visual art program in pottery, for example. Um, and you can talk about as well any potential benefits that you see from your residents. And again, trying to remember to use that hashtag so we can find you. Please go ahead. Depending on your organization, you may also have a Facebook page. So again, we have some example posts in the toolkit, but here are some examples here. The nice thing, of course, is you have a bit more space to write in Facebook than you do in Twitter. Twitter has those 
uh, I think it's 280 characters, so you can't always say very much, whereas on Facebook you can post a little bit more. On Facebook you can also include a link, for example. Um, so if you have a blog or somewhere on your own organization's website where you've shared about this activity, you can tell us about that too. So really, again, just trying to highlight and share more about what people are doing around the country in the field of arts, health, and aging. So here are some examples for Facebook posts. Thank you, Ellie, please go ahead. And you may be asking yourself, well, what if I don't have any activities? So I don't think that's going to happen, but if you perhaps you know, aren't too sure what to do, We've also partnered with a local organization, Dementiability, who has been developing these incredible coloring pages for older adults and particularly for older adults living with dementia. And they have allowed us very graciously to share four of their coloring pages with you. So here are two examples. These are also contained in the handouts. Um, and the nice thing about this is if you look at the image on the left, the diamond, when you're coloring this, there's no way really to go out of the lines because if you're using a pink or a yellow crayon, it won't show in the dark black area around the image. So it can be really nice for someone living with dementia to use this type of coloring. I know that meditative coloring does happen within retirement and long-term care settings. These particular type of images can be even more beneficial for individuals living with dementia because it reduces the error. There's no opportunity for people to get upset because they have gone outside the lines because anything around the image has been darkened. So they can't feel as, hopefully can't feel as though they're making an error. So we have four of those that we can share with you. And what would be fun is if folks across the country pass these out in their different organizations or even people at home print them out if they have their own home printer and, you know, use these and then share the finished product with us because of course everyone colors differently, everyone has different interpretations when coloring, when working on an image. So it would be really lovely as well to see uh, if we can compile a number of these particular finished coloring pages and share those on the day as well. So that's a great opportunity for you. And, and if your organization likes these coloring pages, if you go to DaVinciBility.com, they're actually up there for purchase as well. So you can purchase more for your organization. Please go ahead. So here are some resources for you. So if you're interested in finding out more about what was done in the UK, there's a link for you at the top. Now in the UK, they, the day is a little bit different because at least last year with the funding that they were receiving from Banting Foundation, the organizers were able to pay for creation of activities in the homes. Whereas this year, we are really asking you to share with us things that are happening on a more grassroots organic basis within the homes but absolutely go check out their website. Um, there's also some, a nice PDF here of different arts activities that you can be using. And if you're new to social media or you're looking for social media help, we have posted a social media tip for every platform. So any platform that you're interested in using, you can uh, go on this, this link here and find out a little bit more about how, you know, how to get a really catchy Twitter post, for example, which is something that I'm, I'm always sort of working on. <laughs> Okay, please go ahead. So what's gonna happen after the day? So we're hoping that we will get engagement. That's not just me by myself sharing pictures. Um, we, you know, we're hoping that we will get engagement or potentially across the country would of course be the ideal. But of course we're going to be sharing this content on the day of, but also trying to gather information from what we can do better. So we would like this, hopefully, to become not just a one-off day, but potentially an annual event. So the first thing what we'll be doing is we'll be, as I mentioned, we'll be gathering data on the day of. So we'll analyze those data and hope to share it back out potentially in another webinar to share what the learnings of the day were. So the, the benefit of that as well is, of course, if we're gathering data about people's location, and about what types of activities people are doing and what type of individuals they're working with and potentially even what type of modifications they're making, then hopefully we can help to create connections. So if someone you know, in Quebec wants to do an intergenerational music therapy program, for example, that's something that I've been working on in Ontario, maybe we can partner together and 
we can learn from each other and move forward together as collaborators. Or, you know, if someone's doing a program that you're really interested in their home, it's one of the homes that I work with, they just created a really beautiful art cart. Uh, if another home is interested in starting an art cart but doesn't really know, you know, what's the best type of product to buy, we can put them in touch with one another. We also hope, of course, this year for our first year, we have created our social media toolkit. But the idea would be, of course, to moving forward, create toolkits around what types of activities can you provide in retirement, long-term care, senior center, senior center organizations, um, so that there's more consistency across what's happening. Looking forward to 2021, we're hoping that some of these data we collect, we're going, we're hoping to work with students from Sheridan's Faculty of Animation, Arts and Design, and actually create some nice images, some nice, um, uh, you know, dis descriptions and depictions of our findings through images. So rather than just listening to me talk, uh, we can actually have, um, images that we can share, you know, showcasing maybe a map of Canada with pictures of, I don't know, but potentially, you know, in Quebec, they're into singing more and in uh, Saskatchewan, they're into dance more. We can, we can depict that, the students can. So hopefully working with those students on um, some co-op projects in the January term. And also looking around for funding. So obviously, if we were to um, secure funding for 2021, we could, provide art opportunities to homes. So we could, you know, hire a musician to go in. We could create art kits that could be sent out to their homes. So we're always looking for different funding opportunities. So if that's something that your organization has an idea about, we would love to hear from you. Um, but also just looking, you know, going ahead, are there larger grants that we can apply for that can bring together some of the people who are participating? So if there are music therapists, for example, across the country who are doing beautiful things, can we help to uh, profile that and um, help people really connect from coast to coast to coast? Thank you, please go ahead. So if you'd like to learn more, or if you're thinking to yourself, this sounds great, I'd love to find out more from Kate, uh, you can always send me an email. So it's kate.duquee at sheridancollege.ca. You can follow us on Twitter. And we also have links on our institutional websites to this particular day with our, our I was gonna say our cool kit. It is a cool, our, our cool toolkit uh, attached there on the RIA's website. Um, and, so it, and so, and that's something you can share with others, share with people within your organization. If someone says, wait, you know, why are we doing this? You can point out and say, well, this is a day that we're hoping, you know, to get nationwide connections from. And, uh, and, and you can always point people towards our website. So I think the next slide, please. All right, so here is our last slide. And this is really the, uh, the abstract of the talk, which is how to participate. So you can share this with people in your organization. You can print this out if you'd like and stick it up, um, um, you know, in your art studio if you have one. But we'd like you essentially to take a photo, potentially a video of some sort of art-based activity or creation that's happening. Write a post at our hashtag Arts and Aging CA. Share that work on social media on September 24th and follow the hashtag to find out more about what your colleagues across the country are doing. Thank you very much. Now, I cannot see the chat box. <laughs> so if no there are problem, any questions. Kate, I can take it from here. Um, thank you, everyone, um, for, for joining us today. Um, I'm just going to do a quick scan of the, whoops, I'm going to do a quick scan of the questions box, but if you have anything you'd like um, to ask, um, one of the questions that I'm seeing is, um, will a recording of this webinar be shared? Uh, yes, we will be sharing this webinar on the um, RAA's website, which will you'll get in an email after the webinar. Um, so the recording will be shared. Um, you can download the toolkit right now. It's one of the handouts um, in addition to those coloring pages that Kate had mentioned. Um, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, you'll get a, you'll get an email, and the links will all be there to how to participate and the uh, recording of this webinar. All right, so that's that one. 
Um, and that seems to be the only question that's in there at the moment. Um, oh, is there a slide with links? Yes, the, um, in addition to the recording of the webinar, the slides will also be available um, on the RIA's website and the links um, will be uh, on in, this, in the slide deck. So you'll be able to click on those because um, there's a couple of really great resources that you can check out there. All right, and that um, appears to be the only other questions. I'll just do one more call. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask or any comments about um, about presentation or it's an aging day in general? Looks like lots of very positive messages, folks looking to participate. Oh, share the coloring pages from Dementia Melody on social media. All good things. All right. So Beautiful. I think that brings us to the end for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing everyone participating in Arts and Aging Day on September 24th. Kate, did you have anything else before we wrap it up? No, that was wonderful. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for being so patient with my, of course, internet failing the one time that I really, really needed it to work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. And we're looking forward to finding out more about what your organizations or you yourselves are doing around the arts. So looking forward to September 24th.